experimental method of research is basically to find out the cause and effect relationship between two variables. We call these variables as independent variable or treatment and dependent variable. While conducting an experiment, the researcher has to be very careful. He or she must take care about manipulation, about having control of various aspects, various factors which are involved in an experiment. One more aspect which the researcher has to take care about is a validity. Validity is what you expect to happen. A researcher must be looking at the validity carefully so that experiment is conducted properly, many manipulation as well as control is achieved. Now let us see what is validity. There are two types of validities, one is internal validity and other is external validity. What is internal validity? Internal validity is the quality of an experimental design such that any outcome or effects can be attributed to the manipulation of the independent variable. It is the minimum control necessary to interpret the results. As essential characteristic of experimental design we said, control and manipulation are the two essential characteristics. The internal validity refers to these two essential characteristics. We must achieve control, internal control and for that we must manipulate. The other type of validity is called external validity. External validity is the quality of an experimental design such that results are generalizable to different settings. External validity refers to the generalizability of your experimental result. What is generalizability? You want to generalize. For example, you are conducting an experiment only on a small group. Let us take the same example of reading comprehension. You want to see whether reading comprehension enhances by using a certain program. You are doing it in a selected experimental group. Now, can you generalize that if you do this experiment in Mumbai, you will get the same results in Amaravati? You will get the same results in another situation? This is called generalizability. Is it true for girls? Is it true for boys? Is it, is it true for girls schools? Students learning in girls schools? Many questions will arise and how to generalize that? The experiment is conducted only once. Now, People who want to use your program may be interested to what extent your results can be generalizable. This refers to the external validity. Now the researcher has to be very careful about both these internal and external validity while planning an experiment. As we said, there is internal validity where we are achieving control and there is external validity where we are concerned about generalizability. Now, you can't have both. It is really not possible to have very high level of control and achieve high level of generalizability. Similarly, it is very difficult to have very little control, internal control, that is internal validity and have, general, have to have a generalizability for your results. So now we have to really find a midway, how to achieve the valid results and what kind of balance is required between internal validity and external validity control. Now there are threats to these validities, there are challenges, so that if the researcher is not careful, the results may go haywire. Let us see what are these threats to internal and external validity. There are variety of threats to internal validity and Campbell and Stanley have written an excellent book, though it is very old, but till now we are all referring to that. The threats listed by them are history, maturation, testing, instrumentation, statistical regression, differential selection of subjects, experimental mortality, 
and selection, maturation, interaction. Eight threads are listed. Let us see each one of them to understand how to control them. History is a threat. What is mean by history? We are taking measurements. We are observing retest and post-test scores. Now, what happens in between that time when we are giving the treatment? Any calamities are happening there or any changes are taking place which were not intended. The researcher never thought that it will rain so heavily. Now, because of that rains, there may be some impact on the subjects. They may be frightened or they may, they may be worried, they want to go home, there is an anxiety. So, the things which are happening intermittently, which are beyond the control of researcher, may have impact on the readings, on the observations and that is why there is a threat for the validity. Second threat is maturation. The subjects get older because of age. If our experiment is completed within 15 days, there would not be any effect of their age maturation, they are not growing so old. But if your experiment goes on for one year, two year, then the experimental group students will get older and dependent variable is changing. Is it because of the maturation? Is it because of their getting older? Is it because of age? So, the researcher has to think about how to control this maturation. The third threat is testing. It is the effect of taking one test upon the score of a subsequent test. There may be two, three variables for pretest. It is not only one. We are talking about one or two tests. That is one. Effect of one variable on another. But there can be an effect of pretest on post test because we call it a test wiseness. Well, now you have taken a pretest, you know what kind of questions are coming. And because of this test wiseness, the post test scores may increase. Are they increasing because of your independent variable or because of this kind of testing? This is a threat to your internal validity. So, researcher has to be very careful. So, now what we can do? We can give the pretest and post test to both the groups. So, if at all there is an effect of test wiseness of having subsequent testing, the effect is same for both the groups and then it can be nullified. For every threat, there is some kind of solution so that the threats are nullified. Other threat is called instrumentation. For getting any score, we have to use some instrument. This instrument may be in terms of it is a test, it is an interview schedule, it may be an observation schedule, it may be a rating scale. Variety of tools are used for collecting data. Now, are these instruments faultless? Is there any fault? Are there different interpretations of the same word? Is there a difference in two observers? All these issues are related to instrumentation. It is a faulty preparation of instrumentation. It is a faulty use of instrument or it is there is no inter observer reliability because two observers are giving two different results that means the instrument is not really reliable and that is why it is also not valid. So, there is a threat to your internal validity if you do not take care of your instrument. Preparation of instrument, use of in instrument, interpretation of instrument. Other threat to internal validity is called statistical regression. What is regression? Regress means coming back. If we take extreme scores, on this side it is out of 100, 0 and it is another 100 out of 100. So, if you take that, there is a tendency of the scores to regress towards the mean. Now, this is a tendency of the scores, naturally they will come down and you may feel that they are coming down because of your independent variable which may not be true. So, we have to take care of statistical regression of your scores. One more threat to internal validity is differential selection of subjects. Sometimes the researcher always thinks about the positive effect of 
his or her independent variable, the treatment. And in this haste, sometimes a bias may crop in, bias while selecting the subjects. Suppose you have experimental group and you have a control group. You select only very scholars, you know, high achievers in your experimental group and in your control group they are not so scholar. What will happen? You are selecting your subjects first of all with a fault. They are not equated. So, if they are not equated naturally the increase in their reading comprehension may be greater or will be greater than those of subjects from control group. Now, this is a threat while selecting there is a differential selection of subjects in two different groups. So, as a researcher how do we overcome this threat? We have to equate the groups as far as possible we have to equate the groups on the variables which you think may affect your dependent variable. Now, how to equate the groups? They should be randomly selected. You cannot select them on the basis of their achievement. If at all you are selecting them on the basis of achievement, you should have similar achievement students in both the groups. You can equate them on the variables. For example, you are talking about scholastic achievement in mathematics. Then in the control group and in experimental group, similar achievement students should be there. If this is not possible, then we should achieve this equal groups by using statistics. That is called, we are, we are called that a statistical tool as ANCOVA analysis of covariance, but this has to be achieved. You have to see that before you start the experiment, both the groups are equated, they are equal and from there you are seeing the difference in their achievement, difference in the dependent variable, then you can say this is because of independent variable. So, this threat has to be taken very seriously because the researcher bias may come in he or she is interested to show that the independent variable is very effective. Extra care must be taken for selection of subjects. They have to be selected randomly and then only your generalizability can increase. One more threat to internal validity is experimental mortality. Mortality is a death, but we are talking about experiment that means your subject is gone out of your experiment. For you that subject is no more there. This is called experimental mortality. This is a loss of subjects. You start your experiment with 30 students and there are another 30 in your control group. Now, what happens because of the transfer or because of illness, because of many other reasons, 5 students from your group drop out. Now, only 25. Now, these students may have certain achievements or variables which you have equated with the control group. Now, what happens? You have lost them and now you are checking the, the effect of independent variable and dependent variable whereas all these 5 students who are not with you now would have shown that effect, average effect which they are not able to show. So, now your internal validity is at threat. How can you say positively that now you have not achieved or you are achieved because of this? What can be done for this now? If you have equated the groups, you know in group A you have number 10 who is not with you. Now, similarly you will be having equated group and another number 10 in control group, you can you may, may include them in the group, but you may not take the scores of that, that student. Something has to be done so that the effect can be nullified because of mortality, experimental mortality in your experiment. One more thread to experimental validity, internal validity of your experiment is selection maturation interaction. This is an interaction between your selection criteria and maturation of your subjects. What happens? There is an interaction, there may be some students who who may not have been selected randomly. I am using the word random selection again and again because random selection means every member of your population has equal opportunity of being selected. You are not being biased in selecting them. So, if you select the subjects randomly 
in both the groups, then there is no effect of some of these threats. But now, what happens? Maybe you have selected, there is some fault in while selecting, and some students get mature enough, then there is an interaction of your selection bias and the maturity of the subjects, which happens in your experimental group, but does not happen in your control group or the vice versa. If it happens in experimental group, you may, generally this happens in quasi-experimental because in quasi-experimental the subjects are not selected randomly. They are selected using purposive sample techniques. So then what happens? The interaction of selection criteria and maturation, there is a change in your dependent variable. <coughs> and then you may be wrongly thinking that it is because of your independent variable. Every time we have to be very careful in showing the relationship, cause and effect relationship between independent variable and dependent variable and for that care must be taken. Now let us see the threats to external validity. We have already seen that external validity refers to the generalizability of experimental findings. We have established the relationship between independent variable and dependent variable. And now we want to generalize it to the whole population. Now there are threats. If we do not take care while planning an experiment, we cannot generalize. Now let us see what are these threats to generalizability or to external validity of an experiment. One is interaction effect of testing, interaction effects of selection biases and the experimental treatment, reactive effects of experimental arrangements and multiple treatment interface. These are the four threats to external validity of an experiment. Interaction effect of testing. We are talking about pretest. You started with the pretest and then you gave the treatment and then you have post test. Now, can you generalize your findings of unpretested situation? You don't think so. So, the generalizability at stake, if you give a pretest, it may have interaction with your treatment. This is called a threat to your external validity. Second threat to external validity is interaction effect of selection bias and the experimental treatment. The effect of selection of the subjects in two groups, experimental group and control group, if you are not careful, we have seen that in internal validity as well. The groups who interact with the treatment, the subjects who interact with the treatment, if their selection is faulty, then their interaction effect may be different and your findings, the relationship which you are trying to create between the independent and dependent variable may also be at stake. This threat can be taken care by again by selecting the sample by random sampling selection process. One more threat to your external validity is called reactive effects of experimental arrangements. Now your subjects know that they are included in an experiment. It is a novelty for them. They are enthusiastic and that is why the reading comprehension scores are increasing. Is it because of your independent variable, because of your program or because of this novelty effect or because of the students understanding, the subjects understanding that they are included in an experiment? You have to be careful. Once you find that yes, your independent variable or treatment has a positive effect on the dependent variable, would you get the same effects when this novelty is not there? Would you get the same results when the students are not under experimental conditions? This is a threat. This is called an Hawthorne effect. One more threat to external validity is multiple treatment interface. There can be two types of treatments, one after the other. For example, first you study, the, your subjects are studying with lecture method. Then your students are studying with cooperative methods. In your experimental group, first they are studying through cooperative methods. 
Next they are studying with lecture methods. Are these two different types of treatments going to affect each other? This is a threat to your validity. This will be affecting the generalizability of your experimental findings. Both the treatments are important. Say for example, cooperative methods as well as teacher centric lecture method. But can you generalize these results for single method, single treatment, which cannot be because you have already used two methods, your results are showing the positive effect may be because of one treatment after another treatment, there is no single treatment given. So, generalizability for single treatment is at stake. We have discussed today different challenges and threats to the validity, threats to internal validity, threats to external validity, which are associated with the control as well as the generalizability of the experiment. While setting up of any experiment, the researcher must take into account these threats and try to minimize them. It is not possible to remove these threats because some of them are outside the control of the researcher. So, whatever is in our hand is to minimize its effect, to reduce the effect to the possible extent. So, as a researcher, you find out how we can do this, how we can complement, how we can achieve this control, what solutions are needed. Most of the solutions we have seen are, you will find them in selection of sample. And how to do that for variety of designs, experimental designs, how the sample is selected, how it is randomized, that also need to be understood. In another session, we will discuss about that. But in this session, we must keep in mind how these threats to validity need to be minimized. Thank you.